From Stately Berglund Manor, this is Kurt Berglund with another Pine Tar Baseball Negro League's Great Team Set Preview. This is installment number, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me, five in the series. We are highlighting a team in the set every day for a video for you to give you a sneak peek at what the set will look like, but also to provide a resource for you for after you make the purchase of the set in case you'd like to know more about any of the teams that you have cards for in your hand. So uh, this is the fifth video in our series. We'll be doing one a day. This is number five. And the uh, set is currently available on Kickstarter. For the Pine Tar Baseball game, I'm going to put the link below uh, in the description for this video so you can go there and check out the Kickstarter. You can see Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com, ttlbaseballgame.com. Um, so... Today, our team to tell you about that is in the set and considered by many to be in the top, well, for sure in the top 10, but by many to be in the top five all time of great Negro League teams is the 1924 Kansas City Monarchs. Note the visual aid. The 1924 Kansas City Monarchs were the winners of the very first World Series uh, a very close contest between the Monarchs and the Chicago American Giants, led by Rube Foster. In terms of historical rank, Jim Riley, who wrote this book, the Biographical Encyclopedia of the Negro Baseball Leagues, uh, places this team at number five. Another baseball historian, Negro Leagues historian named Dick Clark, no, not that Dick Clark. Ranks them number four. They were first place in their season in the Negro National League, and they went on to win a best of nine World Series in ten games, ten hard-fought games, against the 1924 Chicago American Giants. One of the games was a tie. That's why they played ten. Um... The roster for this team, uh, we talked about before that Negro League's rosters were sometimes as low as 14, sometimes 15, 16, but never more than 18 or so players. You'll be getting 16 cards with this set uh, for this team. The roster includes Bullet Joe Rogan, Bill Drake, William Bell, Jose Mendez, Cliff Bell, Jack Marshall, Frank Duncan, Lemuel Hawkins, Newt Allen, Newt Joseph, Dobie Moore, Heavy Johnson, Dink Mothel, Hurley McNair, George Sweat, and Yellow Horse Morris. Those are the 16 people on the roster. Let's tell you something about what was going on in the world in 1924. The context in which this team played. Lenin died in Russia in 1924. Stalin assumed leadership. The Teapot Dome scandal was revealed. Harding's interior, Warren, President Warren Harding's interior secretary was accused of taking bribes from oil companies. The Navy secretary resigned. Some 45,000 Ku Klux Klansmen marched down Pennsylvania Avenue. Nationwide membership in the organization climbed to four to six million. J. Edgar Hoover appointed, was appointed chief of the FBI. Eugene O'Neill's Emperor Jones starred black singer athlete Paul Robeson, a former All-American football player. Swashbuckler Douglas Fairbanks thrilled moviegoers in The Thief of Baghdad. George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue rocked the American uh, musical world. The first Winter Olympic Games held in... Oh, boy... Shamanix, France, featured skiing. Rogers Hornsby, one of baseball's great right-handed hitters, batted 424, a modern record. That's what's going on in 1924. 
The Kansas City Monarchs in 1924 uh, were first as a team in batting average. They were first in on-base percentage. They were first in slugging percentage. For pitching, they were fourth in earned run average. They were third in strikeout-to-walk ratio, and they were first in whip. In terms of individual performances for the players that you'll be getting in this set, third baseman Newt Joseph hit 363 with a 409 on base percentage and a 530 slugging percentage. Dobie Moore, the shortstop, hit 355 with a 401 on base percentage, <clears throat> excuse me, and a 545 slugging average. Oscar Johnson, the left fielder, hit 374 with a 429 uh, on base average and a 553 slugging mark. Hurley McNair played right field, hit 349, was on base at a clip of 402 and slugged 511. Maybe the most noteworthy player on this team is a man named Bullet Joe Rogan, who was a two-way player, played outfield, played infield, and pitched, and did all of them very, very well. He also hit. He hit 411 in 1924 with a 454 on base average, and he slugged 636. He was a pitcher, but he was a lot more than that to this team, and... Uh, a big part of their offense as well. Those five players help to explain why it is that this team was so strong offensively. First in average, first in on-base percentage, and first in slugging percentage. Talk about Dobie Moore for a minute. Uh, he's a very interesting story along with Bullet Joe Rogan, but Moore is interesting. I want to read this to you. This is from Jim Riley's biographical encyclopedia of the Negro Leagues. At this point in uh, Negro Leagues history, a lot of things are going on. Uh, the game is evolving. It's moving away from the dead ball period, and it's becoming more and more popular to uh, watch for uh, customers. And... Um, the career of maybe the first great, great, great player in the Negro Leagues, uh, Pop Lloyd, the black Hannes Wagner, um, is beginning to wane, although he was still a very, very good player and had an 11-game hitting streak that made a lot of noise in 1924. But Dobie Moore was a player, a shortstop that maybe could take over as the best shortstop in the game. He certainly had a wonderful season in 1924. Um, in 1926, he was still at the top of his game, but uh, there was an incident uh, that Jim Riley says was cloaked in an air of mystery as the parties involved told conflicting stories. The night began when Dobie Moore and three other ballplayers started out for a cabaret party in their honor, but he changed his mind and went to see Elsie Brown, who allegedly mistook him for a prowler in the alley and shot him. Later, she claimed that Moore had hit her in the face three times before she shot him, but Moore had responded that he, if, if he had hit her three times, she would not have been able to go get a gun. Other accounts indicated that Ms. Brown was his girlfriend and she shot him in the brothel she owned following a lover's quarrel. In an effort to escape, Moore jub jumped off a terrace and shattered the bones in his already wounded leg. Whatever the details regarding the cause of the shooting, Moore was shot in the leg with the bullet breaking two bones in six pieces, which ended his baseball days. So, Moore was a great shortstop on the rise and certainly went on in 1925 to be a big part of the pennant winning, uh, the National League pennant winning uh, 1925 Kansas City Monarchs. Uh, and they went on and lost that World Series to the 1925 Chicago American Giants, the team they faced in 24. But by 26, in mid-season, Moore's career was over due to the shooting and the accident he had jumping out the window. 
you'll get more in this set and see what a wonderful player he was and would have been had he been able to continue his career. Let's look at the uh, batting order that we're providing for you. In this set, you will get a PDF with a description of each team, strengths and weaknesses, roster, a sample, batting order, and uh, a sort of a speculative thing about why they will win your league or tournament, and then a guess on my part as to why they might not. What is their weakness? What might hold them back against the other great teams? Before we get to those questions... Let's look at their sample batting order that we'll give you. Dobie Moore at shortstop. Newt Allen, who was also a Monarch in 1942 um, with the great team. If you saw our preview of the 1942 Monarchs yesterday, um, you know that Newt Allen was the third baseman on that team. On this team, he played second base and hit second. Oscar Heavy Johnson was the left fielder. Hurley McNair played right field and batted fourth. Newt Joseph batted fifth and played third base. Dink Moffel was the center fielder, batted sixth. Uh, the first baseman was Lemuel Hawkins. He batted seventh. Frank Duncan, who was the manager of the 1942 World Series champion Monarchs team, batted eighth. He was the catcher on this team, and of course the pitcher would bat ninth. This is a sample batting order. Of course, you can set up your team any way you'd like to, but we thought it would be interesting for you to see a sample batting order from each of the teams in this set. All right, so why will this team win your tournament? Why will this team win the league that you set up with these great teams of the Negro Leagues? Well, the strength of this team is their offense, and if this team wins your tournament, it's going to be because they just outscored everybody else by a lot. They could mash, and there's not really an easy way to pitch around people in this lineup. If you go in through the middle of the lineup, Johnson, McNair, Joseph, 3, 4, 5, having slugging averages well over 500, um, going to be tough to uh, sort of avoid them scoring runs. But the real key to the offense is the man at the top. The fact that Dobie Moore at shortstop at the top of the offense got on base so much, slugged so much, and really caused problems later on in the inning. Newt Allen batted second. He could get their running game going, and then come the monsters, Johnson, McNair, and Joseph at the 3-4-5 spots. If they aren't contained, they're going to win, and they're going to win by plenty. Why won't they win? Why might this team not do as well against the other great Negro League teams? Well, pitching depth may be a question for this team. Do they have enough great pitching to be able to stop the lineups of the other team? It's okay if you win 10 to 9, but it's not okay if you lose 10 to 9. And that may be what goes on here. This is a middle of the pack or maybe slightly above average for their own season pitching staff. This is not a great pitching staff in terms of the other great teams. I'd put the pitching in the lower half of the 12 teams in the set. So they're going to score runs, but they're going to need to to be able to win their games. I think they probably will. Will that put them in first is the question. The other question about this team is defense. And Moore was very good at short. Allen was very good at second. But Dink Moffel was, was the center fielder, and he was a thin guy. And you know why he was thin, because he spent his days running between Oscar Heavy Johnson and Hurley McNair in left and right field, and he needed to cover a lot of ground. Maybe not quite enough defense. We'll see. Be interesting to see, because they're definitely going to score runs, and they'll be a fun team to play with in this set. And they'll be an interesting matchup for the Satchel Pages uh, of the other teams, the, the top starters. All right, so that covers team number five in our set. 
the 1924 Kansas City Monarchs winners of the very first Negro Leagues World Series. Check out the Kickstarter for the Negro Leagues great team set for Pine Tar Baseball at the link below. Check out Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me. I appreciate it very much. Please click like and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when the other uh, previews for the other seven teams in the set are posted. There will be a new one tomorrow. Thanks again. My name's Kurt Berglund. Have a great day. So long, everybody.